This is the yearbook page, also known as the yearbook ladder page. On this page, you'll use a yearbook ladder to set up your book initially, organize your book, make assignments to individual editors, and it's also where you'll check out different sections to edit your book. And so the yearbook ladder is pretty central uh, to the entire project. A yearbook ladder, I guess because it kind of looks like a ladder right here, is a traditional way of organizing the yearbook. It's also pretty universal in the yearbook industry and across all yearbook software. So basically, here's the way that it works. The book is broken into sections. In this particular case, I have two covers. For example, if you wanted to have a hardcover and a perfect bound cover to sell at two different price points. Okay, then below that, um, three pages, beginning at pages one to three, I have an introduction section. I've got a portrait section, which is 20 pages. I've got an academic section, which is 10 pages. And you see, as I move through the ladder here, it pulls the section into view over here in the section view area. Okay, and so that's essentially the ladder. Okay, I'm gonna switch and show you a yearbook ladder planning guide here if I can find it to dive into the concept a little bit more. So a yearbook ladder, it just allows you to break down the book into different sections. We have a yearbook ladder uh, planning guide that you can get, and it gives you kind of some basic ideas on how to break it down. And so, you know, for example, a table of contents, a dedication section, student portrait section, sports, clubs and organization, academics, uh, faculty and staff and so on and so basically you can kind of do this on paper initially and just kind of plan what your book's going to look like it helps you figure out how many people you need to work on the book with you who's going to work on what and as well as you know how book is uh, how big is the book going to be how many uh, pages do you need and so forth and so again the latter is really central to the project and in this little guide you can see it's just a little table that you can fill out to help your planning you can also do this in excel you can do it on the chalkboard all kinds of different ways but it is helpful to do this offline before you jump into the software Okay, once you get into the software, you can just transfer your ladder into the software in sections and then people can start working on it. So let me show you how to do that. Right up at the top here, you see we can add a new section to our book. Okay, if I click new section, I can give it a name and let's call this section field trips. Okay, and let's say We'll make it 10 pages from now. Remember, anything that I do, I can always change here. Okay, so I'm building some structure, but I can come back. I can change the number of pages, uh, rearrange my book, and so forth anytime that I want. Okay, so I've got a 10-page section called Field Trips. I'm going to give it a due date. Okay, this is optional, and we'll make this due on January 12th. And then I can also assign this section to a staff member. So I'll assign this to uh, the only one I have so far is Elisa. Okay, so she's allowed to edit a section. Next here, I can choose a theme for my section. Okay, themes are built into the software. And there are probably about 25 themes or so in the software. And so now what I'm going to do is switch gears real quick and just show you the content guide. This is also a companion to the software that's important. So we'll just flip through it for just a second here. The content guide shows you all the themes plus all of the other content clip art elements fonts that are available in the software. I think it's a, well... 140 pages or so. And so if we flip through this, you can see we've got the themes. And so artistry theme, okay, awesome 80s theme, capture the moment theme. And so this is a pretty handy guide to look at, uh, again, when you're kind of planning. And so, you know, if you want to have the software create these nice templates for you where you can come in and adjust elements and, you know, change things around and customize, you know, just a really good head start to get a really beautiful, professionally designed book. Okay, so take a look at that content guide. 
And now we'll come back here to the software. We've already been building this book with the artistry theme, which is why it came up when, when we started. And so it's going to suggest that I use that for the new section, which I'll do. Also, one more thing I'll point out is we can also choose no design. And so if you are a professional designer, a parent that's helping you, has an idea for some pages that they want to do, you have all of the tools to completely design all of your own pages on a grid and replicate your page designs throughout the book. And so advanced way to use the software is absolutely available to you. If you're not, if you want a really good head start, choose a theme and you can adjust everything here along the way, which I'll show you. Okay, so with that said, we will click OK. And now we have a field trip section to our book. It's 10 pages long uh, using the artistry theme, and it's page number 68 to 77 right now. Okay, I don't really want it here. I want it up here right after academics. And so I'm just going to drag and drop it and just put it right there. Here we go. Now I've got field trips after academics in my book. You can see if I click on it, it shows the new position in the software and it update, updated page numbers here. Okay. And so that's essentially how you're going to construct your book using the yearbook ladder. So a little bit more about the ladder. Why is it important to break the book into sections? It's helpful for organization, as I've already mentioned, but it's also helpful for collaboration. Okay. As I showed you, uh, I assign this to one individual student. You can have multiple people checking out these different sections in the software all at the same time, logging in individually, even from different locations and working on the book simultaneously. And so collaboration, especially in a yearbook class environment with multiple students, is a really great way to use the yearbook ladder. Okay, expanding on this, the other thing I'll say, I've seen lots of books with one page sections and you can assign it to this one particular user. Okay, and so then you can have, for example, 30 elementary kids all logging in at the same time and creating their own personal page for the yearbook. Okay, so just an example, there's a lot of different ways that you can use the ladder. Just remember, it's a key to the structure of the book, and you'll be spending a lot of time here as you move through the project. So let's move on to now we'll talk about the status column. So you understand that we've got different sections. We've got different people assigned to sections. You know, potentially lots of people could be working on us at any given time. And so the status becomes really important now. Okay. There's four statuses in the software. In progress means that the section is being worked on. It's not being worked on right now. Okay. But it's in progress. It's cruising right along. This next section, the perfect bound cover, has been marked complete. This was marked complete by the designer, and the designer is waiting for the advisor to take a look at it. This section here has been marked complete, and then it was reviewed by an advisor. Okay, so this section is essentially finished. And it's locked. The only person that can open this section up and continue working on it is an advisor. Otherwise, this section is considered to be complete. The goal of the project is for each section to be edited, worked on by a user, marked complete, and then reviewed by an advisor. Once all of the sections are reviewed, then you can submit and you have a finished book. Okay? And so when you log in during the project, you're going to see all kinds of different statuses here based on what's happening with the project right now. The next status we see down here is checked out. This is being worked on by somebody right now. If I click on this and I look over here, I can see that it's checked out by Kaylee Lee right now. Okay, there's nothing um, that anybody else can do about it while Kaylee is working on it, okay? And so she can go ahead and check it in, and then if anybody else is assigned to this section, when they see it in progress, they can check it out again, okay? So that's a little bit about status. Next up, we have the actions toolbar over here to the right. So we'll take our section that we just created here called field trips, and we'll go through each one of these settings. Okay, first up we have info. 
This is just the information about the section. These are the users that are allowed to edit the section. There are also editors and advisors that have automatic permissions to edit the section as well. Okay, last thing you'll see is a little comment, comment field. I can come in here anytime I want and type in a comment and click submit. Okay, that comment becomes part of the history of the section, which is right here. So you can see I created this section, we moved the section, and then we made a comment. And so every section will have a history of everyone that's worked on it right here. And then you can also communicate here as well. Next up, we have the preview. The preview is a preview of the book, and it'll open to the section that you clicked on from the ladder. So this is just a big empty section at this point. Next over, we have settings. A lot of the functionality that's available here under the settings icon are only going to be available to an advisor. So if you're a staff member, you don't have all of these settings available. So just be aware of that if you don't see this. First up, we have the settings dialog, and this just allows you to rename the section. You can add pages. If I want two more pages in my field trip section, I can go, go ahead and add two more pages right there. And if I want to update the due date or assign to staff members, I can do this. The color is literally just for the latter. And so the software picked the next color automatically, but you can choose one if you like here. Okay, and so that's basically modify the section. Next up, we have organize pages, okay? We showed you how to organize a section just by drag and drop. You can also organize pages within the section here through drag and drop, or you can delete pages as well and click okay. Okay, every time you do a delete, the software is going to make you approve. So please just pay attention to the dialogues. Don't ever try to uh, click past important stuff like that. So next up on the settings, let's come back here and look at split, okay? I can also split a section in two. And so all you need to do here is choose the first page of the new section. The new section will start right there and I click okay. And now I've got field trips split. So I've got two sections. Why would you want to do that? Maybe I want to have a field trip section and then maybe a Halloween section after that that's separate. Maybe I want to have two people working on this. So now I can assign this section to one person, this section to another person. Maybe I just didn't need so many pages for field trips and I split it off and I'm going to use it for something else. In that case, I can come in whoops, in that case, I can come in here and just rename the section. Okay, so that's how split works. So again, you know, the book can, can take shape as, as you go and all the features you need to organize are available right here. Next thing we can see now below that is merge down. Merge allows you to merge two sections together. We'll just merge these back together. Okay, are you sure you wanna merge field trips and field trips split? Yes, so I just merge those two sections back together, easy peasy. Next is duplicate. This is a pretty cool feature that duplicates the entire section, including the design. And so it's a really neat way to build your book along the way. So if you build a really nice design and you want to use it for clubs and then academics and so forth, you can copy the section here. Next up, which we will do is delete. You can go ahead and delete the section. Again, pay attention and confirm. No going back. So there you go. Okay, so that's settings. Next over is the checkout for editing icon, the little pencil icon. This is actually how you check out this section into the editor. So we'll come back to this in just a few minutes here. The next button over is Mark Complete. Mark Complete is available to all the editors and staff members on the software. And basically the purpose of this button is to say that you're finished with your section and you want an advisor to take a look at it. And so let's see how this works. If I go ahead and mark this section complete, are you sure? Click yes to mark the section complete. The section will be locked until it's been reviewed by an advisor. So I go ahead and click yes. This section becomes locked, which basically means that there's no editing icon. Okay, so this, this section cannot be edited anymore until the advisor takes a look. Okay, so the advisor will come in here and click the next button over, which is PDF proof. The PDF proof comes up and gives me the ability to generate a low res on screen watermarked proof of this particular section 
or any and all of the sections in the book. Really, really handy feature. It's low res, it's full color. You can print it out to a laser printer or anything you have available. Anytime that you want, you can mark it up. Great way to proof the project along the way, okay? The advisor will look at that proof and then the advisor has a couple of options. Now you can come in here and mark it review. Okay, it looks great. It's absolutely perfect. There's no spelling errors. There's no missing students. You know, everything's great. It's wonderful. It's done. Market reviewed. It goes into a reviewed date and it's finished. It's waiting for all these other sections. Okay, more likely though, initially, you might want to reject the section with the comment. And so you can type whatever you want in here. And from an advisor standpoint, the whole goal is just to oversee the project and provide guidance to individual users. They might be students, they might be parents, whoever's helping you design the book. So if I click OK now, this comes back in progress. There should be a little red dot here, you guys, and there will be a little red dot really, really soon to show that there's a message in here. And so what happens is user comes back in, it's in progress, they see a little message, they come back in here and they see the note and then you see they can they can check out the section again and then the process repeats okay and so that's a pretty good look at how how the status works and how you kind of move the project through and oversee as an advisor but again it really depends there's so many different ways to use this hopefully you'll see that and, and you know with one or two designers it would be different than with 30 designers Okay, and so that is how the yearbook ladder works. Down below is a proofing history. This is only showed once you've started proofing, okay? And so the last thing I will talk about is the final submission. Okay, once all of your sections are reviewed, you'll be able to click the submit button up here. If you click it right now, you'll see that it tells you that all of your sections need to be reviewed. So once all your sections are reviewed, you'll click submit. And there's a process here that's going to be unique based on who is your yearbook provider, your yearbook publisher. You should talk to them. They will probably have already and discussed it with you, the submission process for your book. But essentially what happens is you'll be asked to review a proof, uh, sometimes maybe a printed book. You'll step by step and review it, and then you'll approve it in the software. The software will lock, and it'll be moved off to print, okay? And so that's the, the final submission process. And that really covers it, I think, for the yearbook ladder page. Be sure to click on help and take a look at the user guide for additional information.